Hello everybody, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday. I normally come to you on Friday afternoon, um, but today, this week is a little bit different. I have family coming into town for the Easter weekend, so we are going to do Facebook Friday on Wednesday. All right, I see a few of you jumping on, and for some reason, my iPad is dead and I thought I had charged it. So while you guys are jumping on, I'm gonna to try to make some adjustments here, see if I can uh, get this loaded up so I can see your comments. Hi guys, hello, hello from New York. Oh, nice. All right, good, I'm glad you guys have found me. We had a disaster, a Facebook disaster yesterday. I will that's what I'll call it, a Facebook disaster. I'm having a iPhone disaster right now because I can't find a plug. Here we go, I found one. So yesterday, I did my Tuesday Live and it went really well. I actually went really long. I showed you guys lots of products. It was really fun. And I left, went and got my daughter, came back. I went in and edited it, added all the information to it. And then I started working on some other things and I started getting messages. People were asking me, where'd your video go? Poof, gone, no idea, gone. And I had even shared it over to this group page and I could see where I shared it and it said, attachment unavailable. So clickety clack, I get on, try to get in contact with Facebook, like what the heck people, and um, I was actually able to get a live person and he could not figure it out. He says, I have no idea. I have no idea where it went. And so he, uh, we spent some time on the phone. He was looking, he says, I'm gonna have to look into this further. Um, I am gonna get back with you. And here we are, 24 hours later, not a word. So I don't know what happened to yesterday's Facebook Live. It's really upsetting to me that it's gone. <laughs> Um, but luckily, uh, when you um, are done, you have this option to save it to your phone. And sometimes I forget to do that, but yesterday I actually remembered to do that, so I had it saved on my phone. So I was able to upload it over to YouTube and put it on my blog, and I was able to upload it again over on Facebook. But it's doing something really weird on Facebook too. I can't edit and add all the links and stuff to it, so I don't know what's going on with Facebook. We're at their mercy, aren't we, when we do these things. But anyway, so hopefully today will go better. We will not disappear. And um, if you guys are looking for yesterday's Facebook Live, just go over to pinkbuckaroo.com. I've, I've loaded it up to yesterday's post. We made the sweet cup with the flowering desert. It's also on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for the details for the sweet cup, um, it's all just right there, yesterday's post. Okay, so today we're gonna do, and I told you we're gonna do two projects, but I actually came up with a third. So we're gonna do three projects today featuring the retiring in colors. And I'll tell you more about that in just a minute, but before we get started, um, I've got some prizes to give away. Um, two weeks, has it been two weeks? Two weeks ago, Facebook Live. Um, uh, Patty, I'm seeing your comment. I see all of your commenting, but I'm completely frozen. Patty, um, close out and come back in, if somebody will tell Patty that. Um, sometimes if you completely close the app and open it again, or even restart your phone, sometimes that helps. Um, so it's been two weeks since we did Facebook Live well, not including yesterday's, but the Facebook Friday. So I have two sets of prizes. Um, these prizes are for either sharing the video or entering the raffle copter over on my blog. Um, so Janet Lopez, you are the first winner of family and friends. So Janet, I do not have your mailing information, so please email me or message me so I can get that in the mail to you. And Irene Shan, hope I wrote that down right. You are the second winner, so Irene, I don't have your information either, so please message me, okay? Thanks, Debbie, for doing that. Um, yeah, I don't know, whenever you're having an internet or a Facebook problem, you can either close it and come back, or you can try a different browser if you're on your um, computer. Um, there are some really good browsers. Firefox is always my second, I go to that, if my current browser is doing something weird and typically changing your browser will 
totally, um, well, totally fix the problems. I can hear the refrigerator beeping. I left the door open. So for the next hour, I'm going to have to pretend like I'm not hearing that. Um, okay. So this week, this week's Facebook live is a little bit different. You guys, I did not type up a PDF. Remember I'm, I'm trying to fit a week's worth of work into two and a half days. So there's no PDF this week. Um, I did link up some of the main products on today's Facebook post. Um, so there's no PDF, there's no raffle copter. So if you want to win the prize, I'm getting ready to show you, all you have to do is share the video on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Leah, go close the fridge. You know, it's actually the fridge in the garage with all the drinks. So it's all right. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I can hear it though. Um, our new refrigerator actually has an app that's on my phone and my phone starts beeping when the fridge is open. That's annoying. Um, okay. So the prizes today are all the good things retiring and I have not used it one time and I do have it those pretty koi fish um, this is a really beautiful set with some really beautiful sentiments so if you would like a chance to win this set I will give away two <laughs> you guys are worried about my fridge huh don't worry don't worry it's all right it's outside we're not gonna worry about it. Um, all the good things okay so share the video and you will be entered to win and I will draw that prize next week Facebook Friday will also be on Facebook Thursday okay my kids I'm um, here in San Antonio it's like a citywide holiday there's no school and they'll be home on Friday so um, we'll do Facebook live next week Tuesday and Thursday both at two o'clock okay all right um, one last no I have a couple more things to tell you this month's tutorial bundle remember you get it free with a $50 order my project this month is one of my favorites. It's a little candy dispenser. All right, so you can get it free with a $50 purchase or you can buy it for $15 in my PDF store. Um, there's 12 of us. We each do a tutorial and the tutorials are in both um, inches and centimeters. So wherever you are in the world, it will work for you. Um, one thing I mentioned to you guys yesterday is this new... Um, sorry I'm totally distracted this new suite of products and sweet is the wrong word here it is everything is rosy and this is they're calling it a medley I want you to imagine a kit without specific projects which is the kind of kit I've always said I want I want to just have a bunch of yummy delicious goodies and I want to make whatever I want to make that's what this is so it's like a supply box and everything coordinates and everything's beautiful and it you can't buy it all separately it comes all together in one box so that's what this is everything is rosy is that what it's called yep everything is rosy and it will be available may 1st demonstrators don't get to pre-order it which is different than what we normally do normally i would pre-order and i would design projects and i would have a pdf for you but i'm not going to have that this time it's going to be available to all of us on may 1st and then you better believe i'm going to be expediting it and then i'll be making some really cute stuff with it but i won't have anything ahead of time to show you the only thing i have is this from from my downline Anne marie heil she made these she was the presenter of this um product medley at on stage so i have that but i don't have anything else to show you um i will show you next week some images that stampin up has given us but if you're budgeting out you know like may remember that that's coming may 1st and it's 80 dollars but there's a ton of stuff in there there's um, a pack a six by six pack of paper and one side it's foil embossed there are, I can't remember, eight or 12 six by six sheets of rose foil, stamp set framelits, um, rose, gold rose, shimmer paint, melon mambo ribbon, knight of navy ribbon, and then like a pack of, I think they're little, you know, like die cuts that are already stamped and you just punch them out. Um, so I'll be sharing more of that with you guys as we get closer, okay? So, so keep that in mind. Are you guys hearing me? You know what? My iPad, let's see if I can, uh, if I can get mine up so I can see, <laughs> you know, this has become like how Facebook happens every day. Every time I do it, people can't hear me. People can't see me. It glitches. I don't know how to fix it. You guys, luckily, like I said, my phone records it. 
So if it doesn't work or it's super glitchy for you, you can always come back and watch the recording. Um, and I always upload it to YouTube and I upload it to my blog. Um, if it's, you know, here. Yeah, I can totally see it on my iPad. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I wish that I could help you guys and fix the problem, but I don't know. Okay, let's see. What else do I have to tell you? Oh, 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 I've got a big one and I don't even have it here. Um, the Tea Together class, I have it all in pieces because I was using it last week. Tea Together class, this little purse, the four cards, and the class to go actually has a, a fifth, or I, I guess we would call it a sixth project right here. Um, this deadline is Monday, okay? Monday, if you wanna sign up for this class, it's Monday. I was offering the framelits for free, but those were already all gone. However, you can still get it with a stamp set and the framelet, oh, the dies, we're supposed to call them dies, the dies are in the new catalog. So if you order the class from me and get it and you don't want to put it together without your dies, you can order them on, um, Janu on January, on June 3rd, all right? Okay, I think we're ready to stamp. I am going to flip the camera around, um, hopefully, Hopefully I will be able to edit this video when we're done and I will add the link to that Tea Together class. Um, you also get, let me think about what you get. You get a pack of, a per you guys, I, I feel like I've been on another planet for the last two weeks. I can't remember a darn thing. I know you get some ribbon. And I know that it's an awesome class and all the details are on my blog and I'm gonna have to go read them because I can't even remember myself. Okay, <laughs> so today, oh my goodness. Now, you guys, listen, um, when we're done, hi, mom. Mom, are you getting on a plane? My mom and dad are coming to San Antonio for the Easter weekend and they're supposed to be flying in this evening and we're supposed to have some really bad weather, you guys, so keep them in your prayers, please. Um, I lost my train of thought because I was distracted by my mother and now I don't know. I don't know. Oh yes, don't leave when I'm done with my project today. I'm going to pull out the rest of my product from the new catalog and show you guys and I'm much more organized today than I was yesterday, okay? Okay, so today I decided to focus on the in colors that are retiring. Every year we get five new colors and they last two years. So right here, this selection of in colors are the colors that will be leaving us in the new catalog, okay? June 3rd, the new catalog comes out. These five colors will not be in there. Um, powder pink, let's look at them real quick. These were really great when they came out. I really liked these and I'm sad to see them go. Powder pink, it's a really good light pink. Um, fresh fig is kind of a earthy purple, if you will. Um, Tranquil Tide, not one of my favorites, but I know a lot of people love, love, love this color. Real deep, rich, greenish, turquoisey. Lemon Lime Twist, which has got to be one of my all-time favorite colors. I don't know how I'm going to design without Lemon Lime Twist. And then Berry Burst, which is what I'm using on all three projects today. It's a kind of a purpley pink and it is a really, really good color. So now maybe you have the ink pads already, but do you have your reinkers? These are the reinkers. This is how you add ink to your ink pad. Um, once it starts, you know, once you've used it up, it dries out, you add ink. These last a really long time, especially if you're not using it all the time. These are gonna last you years and years. And um, there's also the markers. Do you have the markers? Um, that way, in the future, let's say you love Lemon Lime Twist like me, um, you know, two years from now, you wanna use Lemon Lime Twist on some birthday invitations, but you need the marker and you need the reinker because your ink has gone dry. Make sure you get these so that you have them um, then, okay? Also, if you look on your annual catalog, page 183, you'll see the things. There's the ink pads, the reinkers, the cardstock packs, then the ruffle ribbon. We're gonna use one of those today, which is really nice, These, this ruffle ribbon. Um, what else do we have? The in color, you know, six by six paper packs. Those are my favorite. And the in color buttons, is that right? Yes, I can't even remember the in color buttons. So 
if you want to be matchy matchy which we all do when we are crafting make sure look at my catalog you guys it's such a mess there they are right there the buttons make sure that you order everything you need i did notice um this morning on the inventory status report that demonstrators get to look at that um some of the whoops that's the wrong one some of the reinkers are on back order but it says they're getting more which i was surprised by because usually this time of year everything is while supplies last okay so don't wait too long because at some point they're going to say sold out um, i would think it would already have happened but it looks like they are um, adding some more so um, get those reinkers use the host code and if you use the host code by monday at midnight you will get all three of these make and takes next week mailed to you all right all right so the first card we're going to make is this was my swap card for my team swap uh last monday it wasn't even last week it was monday and we had a sketch challenge and this was the sketch that i picked and i i didn't put that on today's post i need to share you share with you the sketch um we had four or five different sketches we could pick from so this is the one i picked and i decided to use vibrant vibrant vases um which is the sister to varied vases in the annual catalog has a coordinating punch and it's awesome so if you really like that one and you haven't gotten this one yet make sure you get it because then you could make all kinds of vases all right now we're going to stamp this vase and we're going to use the Stamparatus because I found that I had a really hard time matching up the outline of the flower with the inside of the flower. Okay, so I have already die cut a medium Whisper White Circle. It is a medium, I'm sorry, stitched. It's the third largest, not medium, third largest. And I'm gonna just put it in here, see where I cut them all out for my swap? I left this little negative here um, so that I could, when I was stamping all of them, I could just put them in and just keep using my Stamparatus, which is the best way to use your Stamparatus. All right, so we're gonna put, you know what, let's start, of course, it would be smart to start with the vase. Now, the vase I found was really easy to line up, so I really didn't feel like I needed to use a Stamparatus on that, but if you already have the Stamparatus out, you might as well, right? All right, so I'm gonna stamp the vase in Night of Navy, and then I'm gonna stamp the solid vase again in Night of Navy. Typically, I would say you need to, and now I say I was easy to line up, but now I'm having trouble. I would say you need to stamp off, but you don't need to stamp off because this is kind of that, can you see the variation in color? Um, it's kind of that watercolor look already, so you don't even need to do that. All right, so that was Night of Navy. Now let's get the outline of the flowers, and we're gonna put them right here. And we're gonna pick it up. That's okay that it picked it up because we have this circle to put it back in. Let's make sure, okay? Now I'm actually gonna use my markers. Can you guys see over here or do I need to move it? Let me see, let me see my iPad catch up and see if you, if you can see it. I'm gonna take my Berry Burst Stampin' Right marker and I'm gonna color it in just going over the lines. And one thing that I have found when I'm doing this is that the first time you color up your stamp with your markers, it just stamps kind of okay. But the more you do it, the more the ink kind of builds up on the stamp. So like the third or fourth one, after I did the first one, they were like perfect. But the first one I kind of had to, oh, come on, stay. Well, that one actually was pretty good. Now. What I should have done is taken my Lemon Lime Twist before I stamped that. I may have to do that again. And I'm gonna color the leaves. It's really hard to see. You kinda of have to angle it to see where those leaves are. All right, let's see. Right there. Now I might have moved my circle. Let's see. Oh no. Ta-da! Very nice. Now I'm gonna get the solid right here and I'm gonna line it up 
for some reason I could not for the life of me I could not get those to line up when I was trying to snap it by hand well now you shouldn't have picked it up stay there let's see make sure okay all right so now I'm gonna get Barry Burst this is gonna give <gasps> Michelle this contraption is called the Stamparatus it's a stamp positioning tool it's about a year old and it's $49 and it helps you stamp. It's so awesome, see? Now watch, I'm gonna take this plate and I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do now the inside of those leaves. So when I was making my swaps, I just left all of those on the plate like this. All right, you know what? I'm tired of you picking up. Now stay there. The little magnet will keep it in place. And then we're gonna get the, video is scrambled, Karen, really? Ooh, that's not good. X out and come back, let's see. There we go, all right? Now, I didn't line it up again very well. I did not. This one I did not do well, but let's move this out of the way and I'll show you what you can do if that does happen. Get your, your um, blender, your blender pen, and just kind of get all of that in there, in those white spaces. And then it's like shading, all right? One other thing is I'm gonna take my Wink of Stella and I'm gonna color the leaves like that so that they're a little bit darker and they're a little bit shiny. All right, now I'm gonna take my light smoky slate. By the way, I have this weird ink on my pinky finger. I have no idea what that's from. See that like two little lines? Weird. And I really haven't stamped that much today. All right, I'm just gonna add a little like a line sitting on the shelf. All right, there it is, so cute. Now let's put it together. Actually, let's stamp the sentiment first and then we'll put it all together. Oh, same for you, Stephanie. It's, it's all scrambled, huh? That's so annoying. Facebook. And you guys, you know what? While I'm sitting here stamping, first, before I tell you that, do you see how I'm inking this? I'm putting it right on the edge and I only inked the top word like that, see? So the bottom words, I did it right on the edge. You can only do that with your photopolymers because you can see exactly where you're putting your, your stamp. While I was doing this, I saw the email pop up from the Facebook guy. He heard me say he hadn't gotten back with me. <laughs> Facebook knows they're listening. All right, so let's do this and this at an angle. And I need to, lay, I need to give that a minute to dry because it looks real juicy. All right, so here's our Berry Burst card base. Everything's good, wow, isn't that weird? So it's good for some of you and some of you it's scrambled. Maybe it's <sighs> solar flares. That's what we'll blame them on, solar flares. I have no idea if that's a real thing, but we're gonna go with it because that's beyond my pay grade, you guys. I don't understand either. All right, I have cut out three stitched rectangles in Berry Burst and I'm gonna put them here with Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm starting in the center and then I'm gonna move over. That way I don't get them all lined up and then they're too far to the left or too far to the right. And then I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna put it there, and I'm just gonna make, make it bump up against that before I press down. Yep, that looks good. Dimensionals, dimensionals. Oh, I love these colors too, Debbie. They're so pretty. Berry Burst and Night of Navy go really well together. Berry Burst goes well with a lot of things. My All of my cards are slightly different today, color-wise. Let's see, that one looks like it's going over a little bit far. There we go, okay? And if it's not exact, who cares? No one's gonna notice. They're just gonna look at your flowers and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. You did an awesome job, okay? So don't be too hard on yourself if your rectangles are not perfect. Now this, 
this is that those paper stacks I was just telling you about. These are, um, they come in all the color families. And this is the, the, the neutral one with the Knight of Navy. But the in color one would have all, come on, would have all the in color pattern papers. Now these are retiring, but they're actually coming back reconfigured with different patterns, which I don't know how I feel about that because I have a ton of it in my drawer. I think I'm gonna do some kind of um, special, get rid of my paper special with you guys coming up soon in May. So stay tuned, because I have a ton of retiring paper. All right, now I put adhesive on the back of my thanks, and I'm putting that ruffled lemon lime twist there. I'm gonna cut it off just to match the angle. Now, trying to catch up with the comments. Okay. You find, oh, they rotate Catherine circles. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> um, she says she finds the rotates keep circling on her. It's hard to keep them lined up. You know what? I realized that as I was going. It didn't happen to me before, of course, when I wasn't making a video, but it did then. That's why I put that magnet on there that last time. Michelle asking, can you please explain what swaps are and what it means? Yeah, swap is when you make a bunch of the same card. So I made 12 of these and somebody else made 12 of theirs. And then we had 12 people and we swapped. So everybody ended up with 12 cards of different designs. So you can be in an organized swap, which this one was. My team does a swap every month and you could do a swap, which I'm gonna show you my swap card for on stage. Um, it, you just make however many you want and then you just walk around and you swap with other people. So kind of like a trade. That's a good question. All right, so there's card number one. I feel like I have neglected the varied, no, vibrant vases and varied vases. Um, so check it out. It's carrying over. It will be in the new catalog, both of them, which is good news. Um, if you want to invest in one and maybe get the other one later, that it will be there for you. And the punch. Now we didn't use the punch today, but it's really good. You could use the punch for the vase and pop it up if you want to. All right, let me move project number one out of the way and let's bring project number two. Now I am using a stamp set that is retiring. Another one I have given zero attention to, the needle and thread. This is in the occasions catalog and I just I just never got to it and I'm kind of disappointed because it is a fun set. Um, it's got stitching and this is the distinctive stamp. So when you stamp it, it looks like it has all kinds of layering details on it. Um, so this is retiring. This bundle is retiring and the stamp set is guaranteed through May 25th, but the dies. <laughs> Guys, we're supposed to call them dies now, okay? So it's gonna take me about five years to get used to that um, because we're changing over all of our die cut program. Anyway, the dies are not guaranteed. So if you like the dies, you're gonna have to move quickly and get them before they're gone. All right, so here's the card we're making. We're gonna use Berry Burst Mossy Meadow, which I've kind of fallen in love with since I did those, um, those masculine cards the other day. I'm kind of, it's kind of becoming my go-to. And then powder pink. So these two are leaving, this one is staying. Okay, so aren't they pretty together? Now, I had gone, I was going through some of my old cards looking for birthday cards, and I found this card, and I was like, that's really cute. I need to case myself. So sometimes you guys, when I can't really come up with a good idea, I'll go back and look at stuff I've made in the past and just case myself. So that's what I did here. It's a little, a little more stepped up, but uh, that's what we're doing, all right? Okay, so we're gonna do the stamping first, and then we're gonna emboss it after it's stamped, and I actually need a piece of grid paper. Oh, where did it go? I had it sitting out right here. If you guys could see <laughs> the floor of my office right now, I've got piles of things that need to go some needs to go here, some needs to go there, and I've got to get it cleaned up. All right, so I've got everything on our blocks. Let's pull them over. Um, the distinctive stamp, and 
Every time I look at this stamp, I think of my friend, Ange McKay from Canada. She presented this at On Stage in, no, in November. And she taught us a really cool trick. Sometimes when you see how it's just totally flat, I mean, it has nothing, but it's gonna create all of that texture on it. Sometimes if your ink pad is too juicy, you kind of lose all of that, it kind of bleeds together. So if you have that problem, let's see, we'll stamp on here first and see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But if you have that problem, she said to take like your bone folder and just scrape some of your ink off in an area on your ink pad. Let's see how quickly it takes me to put my hand in that. And then stamp it there. And there you go, it's gonna be better if your ink pad is too juicy. All right, now I did not get a scratch piece of paper, so let's do that. We're gonna stamp two times there, and then I'm gonna stamp over here on my paper where I'm gonna die cut. Look at that one, that one stamped really well. And then let's get the butterfly. No, let's do the little powder pink flower. Oh, Lisa, the retired curvy keepsake box. One of the all-time favorites. One of my all-time favorites. We're gonna pretend like, hopefully you guys can't even see what happened right there. We're just gonna pretend like it didn't happen. I um, accidentally, <laughs> a while ago, stamped on here with a stamp that had been used in green. And so there's still green on my ink pad. I just haven't cleaned it up. I know, it's bad, very bad. All right, now I'm gonna take Mossy Meadow. I need to hurry it up. I'm chatting too much today with the little leaves like this. I'm kind of have them going different directions. And then the butterflies just kind of flying through. Uh, like that, okay? Now, I didn't like that the leaves were open and the flowers were colored in. I didn't like that. So now what I'm gonna do is take my light Mossy Meadow Stamp and Blend and color them in. I stamped them in regular Mossy Meadow, but now I'm just gonna take my blend. Have you guys ever done that where you accidentally stamped a stamp that had dark ink on it on the wrong pad? <laughs> yeah, you can just scrape it off. You can get a paper towel and you know, dab, dab, dab until it's gone. I just haven't done that. And I keep thinking about it every time I accidentally put a stamp right there in that area. Um, I have a friend who actually told me, she had a, I think it was ye a yellow ink pad and she had it at a class and it got trashed with a really dark color. Like people just trashed it. It was in really bad shape. And so she ran it underwater, like completely ran all the ink out of it let it dry and then re-inked it with those little reinkers I was telling you about and it was good as new. <laughs> I was pretty impressed. I would never have thought about that. Okay, one more thing we're gonna do to this is, now I don't recommend that by the way, it's just what I've heard. See how I'm flicking this ink on here? If you're gonna try that, use a super old pad or something because I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'd be brave enough. And I guess if your pad is ruined, I mean, what do you have to lose? Because you're gonna have to buy another one if it doesn't work anyway. Hi, Dina. I'm so glad you're here so that I could say your name the right way. I met Dina at on stage, and I've always called her Dinah because that's what makes sense when I look at your name. I'm glad you told me. You were inked a pad in the wrong color. Oh, no, Mary. I, um, have, I have done partial pad like that too. All right, we want the embossed image to be up. We want it to um, come up. So I'm gonna find the part on my pad that actually goes down and I'm gonna put my paper here. Guys, what is this embossing folder called? I'm drawing a blank and I don't have the PDF today, so I gotta rely on you guys. Is it honeycomb or is that just my name for it? Who can name it? Somebody out there knows and is gonna tell us. Because if you want it, you're gonna to wanna to go look for it. And I don't have the name for it. Look at that. How beautiful is that? I love doing that and I forget to do that where you emboss over a stamped image. 
I don't think it's, is it hexagon? Really? That seems too simple. That seems too like obvious, but I'll believe you guys. All right, honeycomb is not the name, it's hexagon. All right, now we're gonna take a piece of powder pink right here, and we're going to use this die. This die is not gonna cut it out, it's just stitching. See all the little stitch lines? So I'm just gonna put it here, and I'm going to run this through. Boy, you guys knew it. Hexagon, hexagon. Thank you. I knew someone would know, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, so pretty. Now, before we put the big shot away, let's cut a couple of these leaves. I think we only need two. Oh, and we need to cut our flower as well. Here's my, I forgot to get out my dye brush trick. There we go. You just drop it upside down and a lot of times it'll come right out. Stampin' Up! is coming out with a new die cut machine. We don't know yet. It's still in, I don't know, under wraps. And we don't know, but it's coming. And it's coming soon, and I can't wait. It's supposed to be amazing. Now, this one has a uh, flower framelit. So, let's put that on there, and then we're going to be ready to layer it up. Thanks for sharing, Jessica. Thanks, Donella. Thank you. Honeycomb was another one. Uh, you know what? I bet it was this one on my super old card. I bet that was Honeycomb, huh? Yeah, I bet so. That's why I can't remember the name. Because they're similar. All right. I think we're done with this. Let's get this out of the way. All right. Now, let's get the ugly grid paper out of here and put it all together. All right. We're going to do a... It disappeared. It's probably on the other tray. Yep, I left my adhesive on the other tray. We're gonna do a powder pink card base. This is just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock that I cut in half at four and a fourth and scored at five and a half. I always do my cards with a fold up at the top. I think I've told you guys that before um, because when I photograph them, they photograph better that way. If you if I have it like that, for some reason it just doesn't photograph well. So for years now, for 10 years, that's always how I've done my cards, unless I need it to have that side fold. Now there's that color. Both of these are retiring, powder pink and um, berry, bloss berry blossom, berry burst, <laughs> berry burst. Oh goodness, and that is um, four by five and a fourth. And then this one's just a little bit smaller I don't even know if, maybe I did cut it three and three fourths by five. No, I don't think so. I think it's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, five and an eighth. Five and, no, five and three eighths. Five and three eighths, all right? All right, let's layer these things up. This one right here, what we're gonna do is just cut it out with a two inch circle and you could, you know, decide how you want it. I think I'm gonna do like that with the swirls. So that's a two inch punch. And, oh good grief. Come on Erica, get it together. We'll just use the babies. I don't know where the big ones are. These are Stampin' Dimensionals and the babies work just fine. My um, sixth grader has a teacher who calls them her babies. Everything is my babies and your babies and our babies. And I think it's hilarious because they hate it. And every time I use that word, I think about her. All right, where's my sample? What am I doing? Let's put these on here. Let's see if we can stick these on those little dimensionals like this, like that. Nope, a little bit further. Okay, yeah, you guys like this color, huh? This color combo. This is Berry Burst, Powder Pink, and that Yummy Mossy Meadow, which was a color I did not think would be my color. I don't like real dark, rich colors, but this one has won me over. All right, happiness, no, happiest birthday. Okay, I gotta look down. Happiest birthday to you. All right, and I'm gonna grab my favorite little tiny trimmer. This is old as dirt. 
Don't ask me. I don't know. It came from some store about 10 years ago. I prefer a guillotine cutter, you guys. A guillotine cutter is a cutter that has this like chopping arm. I have always preferred that kind of trimmer paper cutter. Our paper trimmer has also retired. So if you've been wanting it, make sure to get it. Um, the blades are, we've been told that the blades will be um, supplied through September, okay? So if you have yours and you wanna stock up on the blades, make sure you do it until, um, you make sure you do a bunch of them um, by the end of September. Now look, I did this one a little bit different. Look at the flowers, they're different, but still cute. All right, so what do you guys think? Cute, right? Good color combo, nice and springy. That distinctive, this one is really good. Look how well that's stamped. It looks like you can see the threads of the flower. Everything in the stamp set is supposed to look like it's been sewn or stitched. So I, I also challenge you to give this a try, stamping a bunch of stuff and then embossing it. Sometimes we were worried like we're gonna ruin what we did, but look how cute it turned out. Okay, project number two is done. I have one more and I'm gonna move all of this out of the way so I can show you. And I'm gonna tell you guys something. I swore I wasn't gonna tell you this. This next card is my swap card for on stage, and I wasn't gonna swap it on stage, but the very last day, I do this every single time. The very last day, I had a little bit of time, and I said, okay, I'm gonna make some swap cards real fast. So I made them, and then never swapped. I didn't swap one single time. <laughs> oh, well. But now I have a bunch of birthday cards made. Yay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this third card and it's a watercolor technique. I tried to come up because I only had a very limited amount of time. So I decided to do something that was quick and easy. And it actually is pretty quick and easy. Um, uh, the only stamp I used was this happy birthday, which is from Itty Bitty Greetings. Carrying over, not retiring, yay. Um, and then I just did a whole bunch of watercolor and I'm gonna show you how I got this texture on my watercolor. This is the Tropical Escape Framelits, also carrying over, very excited. And I just used the negative. I actually saw a card similar to this on Instagram. It was different um, products, not Stampin' Up! And I loved it, so I decided to kind of case it just a little bit. My colors are a little bit different. Okay, you're gonna need an aqua painter. And the colors here are Berry Burst, and I'm just gonna use the inside of my ink pad right here. And I have found with our new style ink pads, it's better to turn them over and press on the bottom so you get a bunch of ink there. Then I'm gonna use Highland Heather. And last but not least, Gorgeous Grape. So the only retiring color here is our Berry Burst. All right, this is an aqua painter. It is like a paintbrush connected to a, a little marker that you fill with water. You just untwist it and fill, fill it with water. And I cut my paper a little bit bigger um, than I need it so that I can cut off these lines, if, you know, if it made a weird line. Um, so it's a little bit wider and a little bit taller. And I have taped it to just a random piece of cardboard with washi tape. If you don't wanna waste your washi tape like that, just get painter's tape and it does the same thing. So I'm gonna give it a little water bath just here in the middle. And then I'm gonna start with a dark color and I'm just gonna kind of drop it on. And I want it to be very vivid. So I'm gonna add lots of this ink. See how it's kind of blending. All right, I'm gonna clean that off come over here and get the berry burst and do the same thing on the bottom. I'm not squeezing while I'm adding the color because I want it to be very vivid because we already added water and your brush is already wet. Okay, so just add all of that. And the line's not gonna be straight here, which is fine. I didn't want it to be like perfect. Last but not least, I'm gonna grab that Highland Heather and just kind of make them blend together in the middle, all three colors. This color combo is really good, I like it. Now, my favorite thing to do to watercolor is to take salt, this is kosher salt, 
and just drop it on there like that. And that's gonna kind of create those little weird funky things like that. Isn't that neat? You can see how it's already kind of pulling the colors into certain areas. So now you're gonna need to give this some time to dry. Um, mine took quite a long, quite a long time because I always use a lot of water. Um, sticking it under a fan will help. Um, and for the sake of today's video, look what I have. I have one that's already done. I got a little splattering there, but that's okay. Watercolor isn't supposed to be nice and neat. I don't know if my mom is still watching, but she would tell you that. She is a watercolor artist. All right, now gorgeous grape card base. Highland Heather, again, same measurements as that last card. Uh, this is four by five and a fourth, and I cut down the watercolor paper to three, let's see, what did I do? Three and seven eighths by, ooh, and I did not cut it very well. I need to cut it a little bit more. Three and seven eighths, let's cut that part off. No, three and, let's see, three and three fourths by five. So three and three fourths by five, right there in the middle. See how these, this is like the super easy card, but has big wow factor. Um, that's why I made them as my swaps, because I could get it done fast. This is a stitched rectangle on Whisper White cardstock. After I cut out the rectangle, I then put the, here are these framelits, right here. I used this one and cut out that little window and then just stamp the little happy birthday right there. And again, you guys, change the sentiment, whatever you need, thank you, hello, thinking of you, whatever you need, just change the sentiment. That's what's great about that itty bitty greetings. It's two, two sets, 32 different sayings. So you could just make these up. You could do different color combinations. Thanks, Kelly. All right, so it looks like you guys like the, the middle card color combination the best, huh? I think this one's the one I like the best. I don't know, I really like that navy too. Powder pink is a great pink. It's a good soft pink. All right, right there with dimensional, so it's popped up a little bit. And then I don't think I pulled out my Share What You Love pearls. I added a few of those. Let's see, do I have any that are open? Oh, well, I do not. <laughs> Here's one. And I, you know what? I cannot find my take your pick tool. I took it to on stage and now I can't find it. If you have your take your pick tool, you can just pick these up. These little beautiful little pearls. They're from the Share What You Love pearls and I think those are carrying over there you go boom done I got 20 of them done like super fast what took the most time is just letting everything dry when you're done with that salt when it's dry let's look at that again when it's done you just brush it all off into the trash I should have mentioned that all right yeah Mary if you could see my office you would not be too worried about my take your pick tool. It's here somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's here somewhere. I've got to get, at the end of a catalog, as we transition over to new catalogs, I have, you know, boxes of new stuff, boxes of old stuff, leftovers of, you know, other things. So it's that time of the year for me. All right, so don't leave yet because I'm gonna show you some more new product, but let's, let's wrap this up. Remember, put your order in by Monday at midnight. Today's Wednesday, so you've got quite a bit of time. Monday at midnight, um, $30 minimum will get you all three make and take sent in the mail. $50 order will get you those as well as that PDF, okay? Um, what else did I need to tell you? If your order is over $150, don't use the host code because you're gonna get stamp and rewards, free stuff. And since I have this out, Let's take a look at that, because I don't know if you guys, sometimes I see you guys not using your, your host. we used to call them host rewards, and now they're called stamp and rewards. They're back here. Basically, if your order is over $150, this kicks in. $150, you get 10% in free stuff, anything you want. 
Um, $300, you get 12%, 450, 14%, and on, you know, it goes up. So the more you spend, if you're spending a lot, or if you have friends and you get your orders together, put them all in together, you're gonna get this um, in free stuff. And when you're, if you're online ordering, when you go to the page, like let's say you're looking at the very burst, and it, it's gonna give you an option add to cart, or if you've hit 150, it'll say claim reward. And you'll cl click claim reward, and that'll go into your, you know, your your rewards, okay? So make sure you guys, if your order's over 150, don't use the host code so that you can get these, and I'll still send you the make and takes for free. Okay, now, I know your low battery iPad, but you've been just fine. Stay right there, okay. You guys wanna see some sneak peeks? I know you do, you loved it yesterday. Are we still recording? Cause, okay, there we Yeah, yesterday was fun, except I wasn't really totally prepared. Today I'm totally prepared to show you, and everything's organized. Um, where's my new catalog? I will show you the new catalog. I cannot show you the inside. This is the outside. Um, it is available June 3rd. I was gonna look on the back and see where that says, no. June 4th, I've been saying June 3rd the whole time. <gasps> June 4th, we have to wait one extra day. June 4th through June 2nd, okay? So we have a whole year, almost, two days shy. Um, so right now I'm gonna show you what we got at our demonstrator event last week. You can't order any of this right now. You have to wait until June. I'm just showing you as a sneak peek and then I'm not gonna show you much more of it until we get closer. The one thing I want to tell you though, is that if you're thinking of buying the starter kit, which means that you become a demonstrator, beginning in May, on May 2nd, you can actually fill your starter kit with items from the pre-order. Does that make sense? So uh, demonstrators, one of the perks of being a demonstrator is that we get to order from the catalog the whole month early. Um, when we have the annual catalog, it's not, with, not everything is open, they can't house they can't, you know, put two complete catalogs full of merchandise in one warehouse. So they give us like a, a PDF, you know, maybe 10, 12 pages of things we can order. And that's what we order in May. So if you can't wait and you want access to that new stuff, you can buy the starter kit on May 2nd and you'll be able to pull those new things into your starter kit. The starter kit is $99. You get $125 free in product and not free, but you know, $125 in product for $99 and free shipping, which is a significant savings. So keep that in mind as I show you these delicious goodies. Okay, this is, and you know, I probably should pull out my little flyer so I don't tell you the wrong names. This is the suite of stuff that I was like, meh, all right, I'm good. But then they did a presentation on it and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have to, I'm gonna have to have all of that. So it's called Magnolia, Magnolia Lane. And it's very, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Look at that, very, very pretty. Petal pink, black, maybe mm, old olive. I'll have to look. So here are all the patterns. You see some are floral, some are stripes, very pretty. All right, so that's the Magnolia paper. The stamp set is a big one. Good morning, Magnolia. Looks like that. And of course, we've got coordinating framelits. They'll cut up these, um, the flower. It's got this other like open-ended, you know, where it's just the outline. It also has this right here, which will make a 3D. I can show you on the front. See right here? You can make 3D flowers with that, a 3D magnolia. There's some really beautiful samples in there. And if you weren't with me yesterday, I wanted to point out the new design of the framelits. They fit, well, I think you have to take them out of the envelope, but they fit inside the stamp case like that, so you can store them together. We're very excited about that, very excited. All right. Now, let's see if I can get these back in here. Oh, and this, look at this. This is like a, an edge die. I know I've said it wrong several times. An edge die that can cut that like, you know, fancy. Ooh, look right here on, on the catalog, right there. 
very very pretty all right so they're the stamps they have these um what are they called magnolia lane large specialty memories and more cards and envelopes because not only do we have the stamps the dies the paper but we also have memory and more cards um which you can make greeting cards out of and you can order these beautiful um envelopes and they have these beautiful envelope liners that go inside along with the cards now those probably don't make sense until i show you this yeah i thought i was prepared all right oh lisa you like it i know it's beautiful just wait there's more this whole suite this is probably the biggest suite that we have so these are called memory memories and more cards they're designed to do some simple like scrapbooking and pocket pages but honestly that's not how i use them i use them to make cards and to make mini albums so there's two of each design as we go through I'll flip them over. Isn't that just beautiful? On this day, so like wedding theme, mm, texture, everyday moments. I love grid paper. Anything that has a grid on it is my favorite. All right. So you are loved. Oh, so pretty. So that's one pack. Then we have this other pack. My daughter's riding her bike home today, so I don't have to rush to go get her. It's hot outside. She's going to come home all sweaty. She's going to say, why didn't you come get me? Little princess. We live like half a mile from the school, you guys. It's not like it's that far. <laughs> okay. So, ooh, I love that. I love stripes. Sending many warm wishes on a special day. Happy birthday. So you can see these will fit on those those cards um, so that you can just go through and use those to make a huge stack of cards. And you wouldn't necessarily need the stamps because the sentiments are either on printed on there or there's usually, these are sticker sheets and vellum sheets. There's usually something in this pack that you could use as sentiments. Or, you know, your card doesn't even have to have a sentiment. I do a lot of blank cards. That way you can use it for anything. Hooray for today. So this is the size of those cards. Oh, it's so pretty. Love that. Oh, here we go. Here's some days like these. This week notes. Happy place to the happy couple. Happy birthday for you. Sending love. Congratulations. So cards or scrapbooking. Together is the best place to be. All right, so that's the Memories and More, the Magnolia Lane Memories and More. Then let's see what else we have. We have ribbon, a double pack. This is like our uh, woven ribbon that we've, ha we've had, but it's narrower. And then some dark, kind of like a linen thread. And then one more really cool embellishment go that goes with this suite. These are called Magnolia Lane Cork Embellishments. I like these, these are really neat. See how they're just little embellishments, little magnolias and leaves, and then there's some tags. All right, so there you go. That's one of the sneak peeks from the upcoming annual catalog, June 4th. I've been saying it wrong for two days, June 4th. All right, now here's another suite. And I'm gonna look in my little catalog so I don't tell you. Perennial Essence is what this is called perennial essence and you are going to die when you see this paper my only problem with this paper is that I'm not gonna want to use it and cover it up I, it's so beautiful I feel like it needs to just be framed see it's um, hand-painted isn't that pretty I didn't already show you that you guys this yesterday did I I feel like maybe I did or maybe I showed my team here's the back side here's another one there's the green. So the, the fronts are super busy, you know, a whole, like a whole painting, and then the back is more subdued. That one, although, is pretty not subdued. There's this one, little sunflowers or daisies. Oh, that's the same one. There's that. That's beautiful. And then that. Ooh, that looks like water. 
You can even like see the brush strokes, like the palette or whatever the artist used. Very pretty. There's those. See, I don't know. I'll have to, this is one of those I feel like I'm not sure I can cut into. It's just so beautiful, but I'm going to have to find a way. This may be one of those where you just use it on a card front and put just a little, like a little sentiment, you know, and then maybe do some stamping on the inside because the the paper is the artwork. You don't want to cover it up. I like that too. Okay, so there's the designer series paper. This goes with it. This is colored vellum. So perennial essence colored vellum and it's 12 by 12. And it comes in three colors. See, look at that. Really neat colored vellum. Let's see, does it tell me what colors? No, it doesn't tell me. This is a, I would venture to say, mm, so saffron? I don't know. Very Monet-like. Lisa, I think she, I think they said the artist had actually visited a museum and had looked at Monet's paintings and came back and said, I want to design some paper in that style. Yeah, so definitely Monet. All right, the stamp set that coordinates is this one, Floral Essence. And we've got a, a punch that matches this. You put them together to make a flower. This is what we made it on stage. We stamped on that colored vellum, punched it out, and put those together there. Look, these are new embellishments. They are called Perennial Essence Floral Centers. They look really cute in the daisy centers too. Okay, one other thing that goes with this is this ribbon, which petal pink, five eighths, organdy, organdy striped ribbon. It's very light, soft. Pretty, pretty. I hope that you're making your wish list, you guys, because it's all coming. All right, next is the memorable mosaic. This reminds me of something we have downtown San Antonio. There's a whole mosaic tile wall, and this is this reminds me of that uh, mosaic memorable mosaic stamp set. There are not dies, but there's a really fun punch. It's called the Timeless Label Punch. See how it punches that, and I guess maybe maybe that I don't know. But look how it's like mosaic tile, and then just wait till you see the paper. The paper is embossed on one side. See how it's shiny? Isn't that cute? And then here, and then on the back, it's like a more monochromatic mosaic. Here's one that's stripes. This would be really good if you cut them and, um, you know, you cut the stripes and then you just use them as borders or things on your cards. There's the back. So each one has an embossed, a shiny embossed side and then a regular side. That one, and ooh, love that, that little hummingbird. No matching framelits on these, just that, that coordinating punch. I like that one a lot. Very jungle looking, and especially with that shiny. And then this one, look at that, wow, a mosaic rose. Here's another one in pink. And then the back, I love this color, this yellow color. And then one more. There's that one, looks like Poppy Parade maybe. And that looks like another, that looks like that one we just looked at. Must be different colors. Let's see, where did it go? Oh yeah, here it is, oh yeah, different colors. So two different ones. Very cool. Okay, so that's the paper. It's specialty paper because it has that embossed on it. We have some jewels that coordinate and I love these, flower faceted gems. These are really cute and I like the size. I like to send treats and envelopes, little, you know, like a card to my team. I send them a birthday card um, on their birthday month and I put something in the card and I think these are gonna be what goes in their card next year. I love it, fits perfect. And then we've got, this looks like mint macaron, textile ribbon. Oh, textile ribbon, that's something new. And there we go. Ooh, it's pretty. It's like a good width. It's not too bulky. Oh, yes. Oh, I hope we carry this in more colors. That's really pretty. All right, so there you go, the, the Mosaic Mood Suite. All right, one more suite and then just a couple of random things. Actually, it's not a suite. It's just two coordinating products. 
the Verdant Garden. And if I remember correctly, those of you that were on stage, you could probably fill in my blanks, but doesn't this coordinate with, I'm looking in my catalog real quick, doesn't it coordinate with the Magnolia stuff or did I imagine that? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does. Don't miss the Coordinating Magnolia Lane Suite. So this is kind of um, even more to go with your Magnolia stuff. Look at that to make a pattern. And I do like that right there. And then all these papers are green, different variations of green. I am a monochromatic person. I like, I don't like too many colors on a card. And I really like when it's just shades of one color. So I do really like this paper. All right, so there's that. And that's all that goes with that, just those two things. Now, I have a few more things to show you. Um, let's see, a couple of stamps. And then we will be done. My daughter's gonna come busting in the door. I gotta beat her. All right, not beat her, that sounded awful. I meant beat her. I need to be done before she gets home. <laughs> that did not, that is not what I meant. Um, to a Wild Rose, this is one of our million dollar achiever um, demonstrator. We, when you hit a million dollars in sales, you get to design a stamp set. So this is Mary Ellen's and it's really pretty. And these are the, the dies that go with it. I am loving this one right here. And I love this one right here. I am sure I'm gonna get a bunch of use out of that. Hi, Shelby. Um, this one is neat, and I wish I had a sample to show you to explain it. Um, sh she, um, Amy Story, presented at um, the on stage here this sw this bundle, and it was really neat. She, you cut out the flowers, and then you put like a strip of paper in the middle, and the flowers come out from the top and the bottom. It's really neat. Um, but that's that, and this is like a little scalloped edge um, die here and these cut out all of these. I really like this. If you like blends, here you go. I think that'll be a great set for blends. Then this one got a lot of attention, A Good Man. It's in that same style as, you know, the other ones that we have that are drawn like this. So now it's one for the guys in your life. And the last thing is above the clouds, we've got the matching punch. It's hard to see with that glare. And it's hot air balloons. I love it, I love it, I love it. I really like this to make your own little banner. Really cute fonts. Okay, that's it, I made it through. I got to show you guys everything. Now don't expect me to talk a whole lot about all of this because we can't get it yet. We need to focus on what we can get, which is what's retiring. And those things are time sensitive. You know, they can sell out at any moment. So you make sure that you've looked at those retired items and you go through your catalog and mark what your must haves and get them before they're gone. And before I say goodbye, I will show you one last time our make and takes for today. They all featured our retired, some of our retiring colors in colors and you'll get these for free if you put in an order by Monday. All right, you guys, thank you so much for sharing, or uh, for joining me today. Hopefully today's video doesn't disappear into thin air and I will upload it over to YouTube and to my blog. Um, if you want more specifics on these, remember there's no PDF today, but I did link up some of the main product products, um, pinkbuckaroo.com, you'll find them on today's post. All right, you guys, have a great week. I won't see you until after Easter. Happy Easter. Um, I hope you get to spend time with your family this weekend and relax. All right, you guys, I'll see you next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Bye, guys.